I'm going to introduce the Dean of University Libraries at Carnegie Mellon, Keith Webster. And he will share some final remarks with us. And then we will see you in Gathertown after that. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Melanie, if you could stay on camera for just a moment to give me a thumbs up that you can see this slide, my title slide. And can you see my second slide? Did that advance to um, a second slide? No, I'm still looking at your title slide. Okay. I seem to be having challenges with uh, Keynote, but bear with me, we'll do it the old fashioned way. Okay, so um, Keynote has changed the way it shares via Zoom and it seems to have stuck a little bit. Um, but it always seems to be my um, very pleasant duty at these events to um, have to say without hesitation, repetition or deviation, a few words to sum up the event and make some oblique references to current events. And I can't begin without recognising that over the past number of months we have been in something of an event. And I used this slide in the um, remarks I gave yesterday and Hua Jin tweeted it, so I thought that was a good measure of success and that I should use it again. And the important thing for me here was the manner in which the Chinese word for crisis is formed of characters that represent the words of that, that mean danger and opportunity. And that from the pandemic that we remain in, we need to recognize that there is a lot of danger, but also a lot of opportunity. And I think either directly or indirectly, a number of our speakers yesterday and today have made reference to some of those points. I was particularly struck by Kathleen Carley's wonderful presentation on misinformation and misleading data in social media. And that reminded me of the uh, very early phase of the pandemic and the Secretary General of the United Nations personally calling out the infodemic of misinformation about COVID-19 and how we need to promote facts and science. That coincidentally sat alongside work that had already been started by UNESCO on building recommendations towards um, open science for member states. Um, I've got a couple of political comments to throw in. Inevitably, we are two weeks away from your election. I will try not to be an alien interfering in your democratic process. But I do think it is um, notable that there are three members of the United Nations that are not members of UNESCO and the United States is one of them. And I do hope, and the signals are that if there is a change of administration, that many of the science facing um, actions of the current administration might be reversed and that things like the Paris Agreement might be rejoined as indeed might UNESCO. So UNESCO has been working on recommendations on open science and those were turned into a formal recommendation that was released last week, I think. There's a nice definition there, you can grab the slides later on, which will um, help answer dinner party questions when we're able to have dinner parties again about what open science is. Uh, but UNESCO is really trying to reach out to member states to encourage universal adoption of open science practices and principles. And if you'll bear with me for about two minutes, I want just to very quickly highlight some of the key themes from that recommendation and then say a few words of summary about the past couple of days. So the UNESCO recommendations identify a number of actors in the open science landscape, researchers, of course, as well as institutional and government leaders, educators, librarians and computer scientists, and so on. Interestingly, tucked away at the bottom of the list, but perhaps most importantly, the public at large, who stand to gain arguably the most from adoption of open science practices. The context for this work is a recognition of 
the challenges that we face as a society internationally, and the importance of digital technologies and science to respond to those challenges. And I'm not going to make any comment on this one, just a screen grab from yesterday um, about listening to scientists. I suspect it's probably a good thing, and I suspect that I can say that without fear of contradiction from this audience. Uh, continuing with the context for the UNESCO uh, recommendations um, that information and communication technologies can accelerate human progress, we have seen that in action during the course of the pandemic. That has proven, and we heard about that both yesterday and today, that the importance of data sharing and universal access to scientific information is critical. And if we don't take anything else away from the last couple of days, I think that has to be a key point. Uh, leveraging technology in science will increase its impact. Accessibility to the products of science will improve the quality and the reliability of the evidence that feeds into ultimately public policy. And a side product, but one that research funders like to hear about, greater access to the products of research can reduce duplication costs. We don't need to repeat experiments over and over again, but allow more research from the initial data. Um, more people can be engaged in open science. It democratizes knowledge and scientific work and promotes inclusion of scientists and knowledge from marginalized groups as well as respecting the diversity of cultures and knowledge systems and reducing inequalities in science. Uh, we heard yesterday um, from our colleagues at Digital Science about the work they're doing to give us greater insight into the proliferation of research, advancing the sustainable development goals um, through their product dimensions, uh, they have published an interesting report on how that fits together and UNESCO and a variety of other intergovernmental agencies and NGOs have developed 2030 Connect, a very important platform which will be of interest to those pursuing open science, particularly in the SDG context. Uh, some key objectives from this UNESCO work, ultimately it's about um, stimulating investment, transforming culture, promoting cooperation. And they have set out a number of areas of action to help promote a common understanding of open science, develop a policy environment, invest in infrastructure and capacity, cultural transformation, promotion of innovation, and promotion of international cooperation. Uh, the recommendations are on the web, uh, I encourage you to read them. Ultimately, they um, point out that open science is a global public good. And I would contend that that is something that we all should celebrate. Some of the key takeaways for me over the last couple of days um, have been about the essential nature of infrastructure for data sharing, data reuse and open science as well as the criticality of training and of fair data, the importance of making data visible to machines, the importance of us paying attention to bias, unfairness, privacy, and security. And undoubtedly, and I've heard this over and over again over the last couple of days, everyone celebrates the carpentries, and it's great to know that there are musical jokes that I can form at long last. Um, those of you who can't remember, this is The Carpenters, a popular musical group from the 70s and 80s, but it felt like a good time to throw that one in given today's wonderful musical interlude. A couple of other um, slightly more lighthearted takeaways. Um, a few people have made reference to the importance of documentation. Um, it is not necessarily evil, but it is a necessary evil, and we can all imagine everyone dashing back to their labs to create documentation, having heard the encouragement of yesterday's and today's events. Um, I, I was reassured to learn that there are both good bots and bad bots and that not all bots are bad. Uh, there was a challenge that I hadn't 
realised um, was at play, um, which was um, whether Slack or Twitter would dominate. Uh, when I've done these summing up sessions the last couple of years, I have um, tended to drift towards Twitter and grab and repurpose everyone's tweets. And it seems as though Slack is perhaps moving into that landscape. I'm not quite sure what to take from that, uh, but it has been interesting just to see that shift of platforms, make of that what you will. Um, it was a great way to find this um, graphic that Katie Berman shared of how to understand the good and bad aspects of fear. And Melanie referenced um, coming to the bar stools at the front of the Mellon Institute Library. Um, just a glimpse down memory lane for those of you who have been with us the last couple of years and what you're missing if you're here for the first time this year. This is the Mellon Institute building at Carnegie Mellon, um, where we normally have the OSS event, more popularly recognized as the backdrop for the um, Gotham City Hall in the Batman movies. You can just spot the columns up there, uh, which points me to one of my favorite comments from yesterday, um, a colleague from Stanford who made the unforgettable observation, no more spreadsheets. And if that's the best news of the last couple of days, it is still fantastic news. Uh, with that, I just want to offer some thanks um, to my colleagues in the university libraries. Thank you all for the tremendous work that you've put in. Um, I suspect at some point I thought this is going to be easy. You're just organizing a meeting on Zoom and it'll be much less effort than ordinarily is the case. But I know that a huge amount of work went into organizing ADER and OSS. I'm truly grateful to all of you. I'm also grateful to the members of the steering and program committees, uh, Marshall Leber, my fellow dean at CMU, dean of the School of Computer Science. I thank him for his encouragement and support and for sponsoring these events. And also to our speakers um, from today's event and from yesterday's ADER meeting. Uh, Melanie already mentioned that we will be putting um, the recordings and slides and other materials where speakers give their permission on the OSF pages where you can find um, materials from previous events. So with that, thank you all very much. It's been wonderful to be part of these events the last couple of days. I have truly enjoyed seeing the interactions on Zoom, on social media. Uh, who knows, next year we might be able to get together again, all things permitting. Uh, in the meantime, um, head over to hang out with your new best friends. Um, and with that, Melanie, back to you. Thank you, Keith. Um, okay, uh, as Keith said, we're going to reconvene in Gathertown um, and we will put that survey up in the Slack channel. So if you get a chance to fill that out, that would be great. It just helps us plan these events better in the future. And thank you so much for all of our speakers for joining us and for all of our participants. Um, we had so many great conversations today. Um, it was really great to be able to have people joining us from all over the country and abroad. I think that's one of the benefits of doing this virtually, for sure. Um, so with that, I will um, close out the meeting and see you in Gathertown. Thank you.